Hello, Rupert. Uh, George, hello. Hello. Can you please talk about time? I know that the future is merely a concept. But what about the past? To what extent is the past real or merely a mental concept? Okay. Um, thank you for your very clear question, George. To what extent is the past um, a concept? Um, well, how are we going to find out? By exploring our experience. So, uh, go to your experience of the past. Try now to experience the past and see what is real in that experience. So, first step, go into the past, which requires you to leave the present, take a step out of the present and, and go into the past. Okay, but I can't really do that. I mean, I can only go into a memory of the past, which is- Okay, but, but, but a memory of the past, as you say, is a is a conceptual image or a concept or an image of the past, but it's a present experience, as you rightly say. So what we want to find out is, is the past that we seem to remember, that we think about, is it actually real in the way that we consider it to be? So in order to do that, we have to we have to actually make the exploration ourselves. We actually have to go there, touch the past, hold it in our hands, so to speak, and investigate it. What, what is really there? So again, don't go to the memory of the past, the concept of the past, the image of the past. Can you actually go there? I don't think I can. I don't. Look. One moment, go, can I actually go into the past? No, unless I'm in a science fiction movie or something. Well, but, even, but even if you were watching a science fiction movie, would, would that movie take place in the past or would it always be a present experience? It would always be a present experience. Okay, George, have you ever for just a moment stepped out of your present experience into a past? No, I don't believe I ever have. You don't believe you ever have or you're certain that you never have? I'm not certain about anything, but I, I would say I'm certain I never have. Okay. Now, obviously your own subjective experience is, is could, could, could be unreliable. So let, let's consider everybody else. Let's consider we were having this conversation with how many are we? 7.8 billion people. All the people that have ever lived. And we were to ask them the same question. Would any of them be able to say from their experience, I stepped out of the present into the past. I went there. Well, I think in several insane asylums, you might find some people who claim to have done that. But, but, realistically, but, no. but, but would, would even those people have actually experienced the past or, or would not their experience have taken, whatever their experience was, would it not have taken place in the present? Yes, you're right. The experience can only take place in the present can only take place in the present and does only take place in the present. Now, what about the future? I don't think I've got any problems about the future. Okay. The future clearly is conceptual. Okay. I but no, but what, what I want to establish, George, you're, you're absolutely right. What I want to establish is that these, we, we normally conceive of, of a line of time, uh, uh, the present moment being an, a, a moment along that line of time and these two vast periods or spaces of time one ending backwards indefinitely into the past and one extending forwards indefinitely into the future but if that was a a, a true model 
and, and it, it, this is our model of time. If it was our, if it was a true model, a model of reality, we would have to be able to subject this model to the scrutiny of experience. We've never experienced the past. Nobody has ever or could ever experience the past or the future. What, what, all, all we experience is the present. But what becomes of our idea that the present is a moment sandwiched between these two vast spaces? It, it is when you experience the present, do you experience a fraction of a second, a moment? Is the present a moment? Or, or is the present... Really. No, it's not. The, the present is ever present. And by ever present, I don't mean everlasting. We've dispensed with our idea of a line of time. We, do we don't experience a present moment. We do experience a present. But this present is ever present, not everlasting in time, but ever present now. Eternal. But the mind, which is configured to a, a think in terms of time and space, but because the two faculties of the human mind consist of thinking and perceiving, the human mind confers upon the eternal now the idea of linear time. In other words, the mind, a human mind, conceives of the eternal now in a way that is consistent with its own limitations and makes it seem like time. The time is a construct of the human mind. Now, there is a reality to what we call time. It's not just a, um, a figment of the imagination. There is something real about our experience of time, and that is the eternal now, the ever-present now. But it's the mind that conceives that the ever-present is everlasting. Okay, I get it. Thank you. If I have a memory, is that what is it? What is the source of the memory? That the memory occurs now, and if I memory occurs now, but but our interpretation of the memory. Consider the possibility that that our interpretation of memory, namely that an event occurred in the past, may be the human mind's limited and distorted view of reality. Oh, in other great. words, that, that, okay. sorry. No, 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 I said, no, I, I, please go on. I said, great, that's exactly what I want to hear. Please continue. So I'm not suggesting there isn't some reality to what we consider to be time or the past or memory. I'm suggesting that our mind imposes its own limitations on that reality and makes it appear in a way that is consistent with the limitations of that mind. Our mind is constructed in two dimensions, so we think of two-dimensional time. If, we, if, we had a, if our minds were configured or conditioned in different ways, we would experience the eternal now in a different way. We would experience it in a way that was consistent with the constructs of our own mind. Okay, yes, okay. I, 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 get, I get what you're saying. That's exactly what I want to know. And I, that's fine. It's so, what, what, George, what is frustrating is that having understood this, we then continue to think about the eternal now. Well, as long as we are thinking about the eternal now, we are going to conceive the eternal now in a way that is consistent with the limitations of our own thought structures. So we, we cannot think about this satisfactorily. You just cannot see white snow through orange tinted glasses. We just cannot perceive the nature of reality through the limitations of a finite mind. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rupert. I really appreciate it. This is great. Thank, thank you, George. Nice to meet you. Thank you.